The 18th of June was a watershed moment in deep sea tourism. It was the day Titan, an Ocean Gate super submersible, was to undertake its third dive at a depth of more than 10,000 feet in the North Atlantic, transporting five people to witness the infamous Titanic wreckage. After one hour and 45 minutes, all communications from the sub were cut off. It went missing. All efforts by the U.S. and Canadian Coast Guards to find the Titan were futile. On June 22, debris from the 23,000-pound submersible was discovered on the surface of North Atlantic waters off the coast of Newfoundland, confirming suspicions that the vessel had exploded and all humans aboard were killed. How could that be? What happened? Here's what happened to the Titan, the Ocean Gate submarine. The elite have always coveted a tour of the Titanic disasters since James Cameron sparked interest in the doomed liner. Ocean Gate, a private U.S. corporation that offers deep-sea tourism and submersibles like the Titan, rose to the occasion. Since its inception in 2009, the company's most daring excursion has been a deep-sea dive to the ice grave of the RMS Titanic, the most ill-fated ocean liner in history. With two previous dives deemed successful, this would be the company's third, transporting five people as crew. British businessman Hamish Harding, Pakistani investor Shah Sada Dalwood and his son Suleiman, French diver Paul-Henri Narjolet, and Ocean Gate CEO Stockton Rush were among the lucky five. In 2022, Hamish Harding traveled to suborbital space with Jeff Bezos' rocket business Blue Origin. Harding has two Guinness World Records in exploration, the longest period at full ocean depth by a crewed vessel and the longest distance traveled along the deepest portion of the ocean. The SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, Institute is a trustee of Shahzada Dawood, vice chairman of the Pakistan-based conglomerate Dawood Hercules Corporation. The men had a love of exploration, and their most recent desire was to witness the Titanic. The Titanic was one of the most tragic steamships of the 20th century, sinking on April 14, 1912. The ship collided with an iceberg, which ripped it open like a tin can and sank it in the North Atlantic near Newfoundland. Almost 1,500 individuals died from drowning and cold because help did not arrive in time. Today, the Titanic's debris lies 12,500 meters below the surface in an ice tomb. Director James Cameron is one of the few who has examined the wreckage 33 times, using his own submarine, the Deep Sea Challenger. The Titan was hailed as one of the most advanced submersibles capable of diving to extraordinary depths. The Deep Sea Vehicle was billed as a breakthrough submersible that provided deep sea travelers with an unprecedented opportunity to witness the Titanic. It had previously made two successful journeys to the wreckage in 2021 and 2022, and this would be its third. Past passengers were dissatisfied with the experience, disclosing terrifying details of safety hazards, communication failures, and design flaws. One has to wonder why the corporation continued the flights knowing that such problems could arise. Brian Weed, a Discovery Channel camera operator and passenger on Titan's first dive, characterized the experience as terrifying, making the passengers feel like sitting ducks. The Titan, named after Saturn's largest moon, is a 21-foot, 10,432-kilogram carbon fiber titanium submarine that can carry five people. There are no seats and a curtained-off section that serves as a makeshift restroom. That's not the best setting, but who cares when you're on a once-in-a-lifetime adventure? The Titan is classified as a Cyclops-class manned submersible capable of diving to 13,123 feet by Ocean Gate. It has a high-tech inertial navigation system, INS, an ultra-short baseline acoustic positioning system, a robotics laser scanner, a teledyne 2D sonar, and other characteristics. What's surprising is how a submersible of this grade and superior technology ended up in a disaster when it was supposed to be nearly impenetrable. So was the Titanic. The vessel was thought to be unsinkable, but it sank. 
Many people thought the Titanic was doomed from the moment she set sail, demonstrating how much the Titan had in common with it. NASA was also involved in the Titan's construction. According to CEO Stockton Rush, one of the men that perished with the sub, the space agency's experience in the design and automated fiber insertion lamination of composite hulls proved vital. The Titan's hull was made of aerospace-grade carbon fiber, which allowed it to weigh a fraction of what other submersibles in its class do. Because of the Titan's lightweight, it could transport a larger payload, including five crew members, a pilot, researchers, and mission specialists. The larger cylinder-shaped cabin, in stark contrast to the normal sphere-shaped shapes of most submersibles, could have been a design flaw. The Titan communicated via Elon Musk's Starlink satellite network and was steered by messages from a surface ship to the sub. Another dubious aspect of the sub was how it was bolted shut from the outside and required an outside staff to retrieve the occupants within. This meant that in the case of a malfunction, the people within had no chance, death was unavoidable. They were, in fact, sitting ducks. The Titan sub prepared to dive on June 17, 2023. The weather had been terrible up until that point, and Newfoundland was having its worst winter in decades. This was to be the Titanic's only manned voyage in 2023, a weather window had just opened, and the crew took their opportunity. The journey to the Titanic wreck, located 900 nautical miles, 1,667 kilometers, east of Cape Cod on the U.S. coast, takes eight days, with each dive lasting several hours. The Titanic is 12,500 feet below the surface. The pressure there is 400 atmospheres, which means a force of 6,000 pounds pressing in on every square inch of an object's surface. The Titan was subjected to increased external pressure because to its bigger interior volume. The Titan began its two-hour dive into the North Atlantic Ocean to the Titanic at exactly 8 a.m. The Polar Prince, a surface vessel, remained above it. Everything proceeded well until 9.45 a.m. when the sub stopped responding to communication from above. Even though the monitoring crew on the surface vessel worked feverishly to restore communication, they were unsuccessful. The Coast Guard was notified of the Titan's disappearance at 5.45 a.m., anticipating the worst. A joint U.S.-Canadian Coast Guard operation swept the whole area until June 19 utilizing ships, planes, and sonobuoys capable of monitoring to a depth of 13,000 feet. There was still optimism that the crew was alive. After all, the sub had 96 hours of oxygen, which meant they could survive for at least four days. The search had evolved into a worldwide air and sea effort by the 20th, with the U.S. Coast Guard, U.S. Navy, Canadian Coast Guard, and Ocean Gate expeditions forming a unified command to oversee the search. France also sent out the Atalante, a ship outfitted with a deep-sea diving craft. On the same day, a Canadian Lockheed P-3 Orion aircraft outfitted with submarine tracking equipment reported hearing thumping sounds at 30-minute intervals but was unable to substantiate their findings. Everyone involved had begun to fear the worst by this point. It was getting close to D-Day for the humans aboard the Titan when their oxygen was going to run out. However, that was never going to happen. They were most likely smashed into nothingness. On June 22nd, a deep-sea rover discovered something near the Titanic debris. It was Titan fragments. A nose cone was discovered first, followed by a massive debris field. The front end of the pressure hole lay at the end of it, the first sign of a catastrophic disaster. Further exploration revealed a tiny area of debris where the other end of the pressure hole rested. This signified that the rest of the vessel had been discovered. Ocean Gate confirmed the crew's death shortly after the news reached the Coast Guard, but what exactly happened? The Titan had imploded, according to expert opinion. People have yet to comprehend the catastrophic process of an implosion, according to Bob Ballard, a crew member who discovered the Titanic wreck in 1985. It is characterized by a gigantic surge of energy that descends on you like tons of rock smashing your body into itself. Everything is shredded in an implosion. 
Furthermore, the Titan was not created in a typical shape, its hull was not a sphere, a perfect shape in which water exerts equal force on all places. As a result, some analysts warned that it threatened implosion. Even as the hunt for survivors continued, maritime researchers demonstrated how an implosion may be the worst possible conclusion of all the eventualities envisioned during Titan's round-the-clock search. Confirming the claims, the U.S. Navy claimed that one of its ships recorded sounds consistent with an implosion shortly after the submarine lost contact with the Polar Prince. That demonstrated that a lack of oxygen was never the issue, their deaths occurred considerably sooner. Arun Basil, a physics professor at Northeastern University, compared an implosion to the force of a whale biting on someone. It also looks like a car that has been compacted by a compacting machine. According to scientists, even if the Titan's hull with its built-in sensors could resist enormous pressure, a minor flaw would have resulted in an instant implosion in less than 40 milliseconds. The crew had no idea what hit them, it had to have been all over in seconds when they were decimated. The implosion instantaneously killed the crew and divided the Titan horizontally. The discovery of the hull in two parts provided additional evidence of what had occurred. The Titan accident will be remembered as one of the darkest days in the history of contemporary deep-sea ocean exploration. Deep-sea rovers are continually investigating the Titanic wreckage for new possible clues to determine what really happened. I watched over the ensuing days this whole sort of everybody running around with their hair on fire search, knowing full well that it was futile, director James Cameron said of the tragedy. The only explanation I could think of was an implosion, a shockwave event so powerful that it destroyed a secondary system with its pressure vessel and battery power supply, which is the transponder that the ship uses to track where the sub is. Alright everyone, here's where the video ends. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more recent updates.